welcome back to Calabunga Corner. In this episode, I'm going to talk about something very special to me, the Words and Pictures Museum. And I'd like to share the story of how I found the Words and Pictures Museum and just what a great place it was. I know I showed video of the opening at the new location and the closing of the Words and Pictures Museum. Now to tell you how I found and became a part of the history of the Words and Pictures Museum. It was in August 1994 that I was traveling home from Boston with my mom and my sister. We just left a friend's house and on the way home we're thinking, let's go and show my sister where Mirage Studios is because I actually did find the location. And uh, when we got there we were thinking maybe we should get a scrap camera that we can uh, go and get pictures of the outside of the studio to say, this is Mirage Studios! So we went to this camera shop on Main Street, Northampton, Mass. And when we went there, the people noticed I was wearing turtle clothing. And they're like, oh, you're turtle fans, huh? I'm like, yeah. They're like, have you been to the Turtle Museum? Turtle Museum? Turtle Museum? It's kind of like that episode of Third Rock from the Sun where they go, room service? Yeah, that was me. Turtle Museum? So I was in a bit of shock when they said that because I never heard of a turtle museum before. Ever. It was weird and exciting. So they're like, yeah, right down the street at the Roundhouse Building, there is a museum that is about the Ninja Turtles. So I ran down the street and found this roundhouse building. We went down to the back and got in the elevator and went up. And there was this life-size statue of Splinter. Oh my god, it's a turtle mu No, it's a comic book arts museum. The Words and Pictures Museum. I went through there gawking at all the artwork. Just going in awe over the fact that this is original artwork. It's not just comic books. It's actually seeing the artwork made for the comic books. And they even had the cover for issue one of the first printing of Ninja Turtles. Talk about a heart stopper just seeing that with my own eyes. I went through the museum and we got to the end where they had this tiny little one wall shop with their t-shirts and postcards and stuff. But down at the bottom they had a white bucket, one of those bins, plastic clear, and uh, in it was a bunch of animation cells. I start flipping through them. They're all Ninja Turtle animation cells from the original cartoon series. Oh my god, oh my god, I want, I want, I want. And I look at the worker up there and he's just watching me all amused. And uh, he goes, Turtle fan, huh? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. How much are these? Five bucks a piece. Five dollars! That was it for original animation cells. So I'm going through and I'm picking out my favorites. I picked out ten of my favorite animation cells. And the workers started to pile out there. There was three of them just standing there watching us. And the guy spoke up again. Yeah, the big man himself's going to be here tomorrow. What? Yeah. Kevin Eastman's going to be here tomorrow for a melting pot autograph session. What? Wait a second, I'm going to get the chance to see Kevin Eastman? Now, I saw him two years earlier at TurtleCon 92, but they actually get the chance to see him at a small event like this? We are going to stay to see Kevin Eastman, and I was so excited. I mean, my heart was throbbing. I was in anticipation just to be able to see him again, get his autograph again, and maybe a picture with him. I couldn't hope for more than that. I, I really couldn't. I mean, the chance to see the creator of the Ninja Turtles a second time in my life, what's the odds of seeing them once? So, in the excitement, I, I had good news and bad news that day. I also found out that someone I knew in the area passed away. So, while I was thrilled and excited about the chance to see Kevin Eastman, I was also crushed finding out that someone I actually liked was gone. So we leave there. We got a hotel room. We stayed at a place called the Inn at Northampton. 
It's gone now. Well, it's not gone. It's still there. It's called the Clarion. It's no longer the same owners, though. It's really clear. It's different owners. But my favorite room is 147. It's right off the pool. <laughs> I've stayed there several times. And uh, we stayed at this hotel the next day, went, got in the line, and I stood in that line so excited. I'm just going back and forth holding on to a few turtle items I had with me on the trip for him to autograph, including the animation cells I just bought the day before. I'm like, yay, yay, turtles. And we get in. It was a long wait in the line. Kevin looks up at us, and this big smile goes on his face, and he goes, you're our Michigan people, aren't you? He remembered me from TurtleCon 92. We made friends with the staffers and we were talking to them and found out that that night there was a private party for members of the Words and Pictures Museum. So, I bought my membership. I got the $25 associate membership. Sadly, that only got one other person in, but the museum was nice enough to get my sister in as well. So me, my sister, and my mom went and got to hang out with the crew that night. This was my first experience of the Words and Pictures Museum. And sadly, it was my last time at the Roundhouse. They closed down that museum just a month after I was there. And then the following January is when they reopened at the new location. Which is blog number five for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. I had a blast there, as it showed in the video. But I came back every single year for their membership parties. I was constantly there in Northampton. The museum became like a second home. Originally at the Roundhouse Museum, they had the four turtle statues up in the very end room where their little gift shop was. And they had a bunch of tables where you could sit down and relax at the end. But inside the new building, it was kind of a span over the second and third floor. If you looked off a balcony from the third floor, you could see Michelangelo's hand was even in reach for me. But, uh... The other turtles were all right there. But if you're standing in the second floor area and you look up, you have them all above you. And uh, this right here is a postcard of uh, those statues. Later, 1997, they added Venus de Milo statue to the group. So there was all five turtles plus Splinter as part of the display. They constantly kept bringing in different turtle art. And they constantly kept bringing in really really cool guest i mean one year i got to hang out with ben the creator of the tick and a cool story about that was uh, i was at an autograph session they were holding there and ben was sitting right next to kevin eastman and i'm like wow it's so cool to have you two sitting next to each other and they're like oh yeah and ben's like yeah i, I you know we're working on a movie right now and i go oh if you do a movie you need to get the same voice actor you have for the tick in the cartoon. And he looks at me and he goes, why? And I'm like, because it's Michelangelo's voice from the original Turtle cartoon. So we all had a laugh. It was really cool having Kevin Eastman and Ben talking about that. But that's just one of the many wonderful experiences there. I one time got to enter a raffle they had there and won a Ninja Turtle animation cell from the episode Leonardo Cuts Loose, where Leonardo is holding Casey Jones down. So many wonderful experiences in this one building. The new location was four stories, and they actually held their parties inside the museum instead of over at a nightclub, like they did for the Roundhouse Museum. But uh, it was worth it. It was worth every drive out there. It was worth every year buying the membership. I started going up in my memberships. I started buying the $125 membership yearly just to be able to have... An awesome membership to be able to go to all the events and get my full family in. When that museum closed, it was like going to a funeral. Walking through, seeing everyone dressed up nicely, hearing speeches, and seeing the sad looks upon people's faces. And looking at the building, looking at the stuff hanging in the building, it was knowing that this is the last time I would ever get the chance to see this stuff. 
And how many people didn't even know about the museum? How many people never got the chance to see what I was seeing? Just knowing that it was going to be gone. It was so depressing. It was heartbreaking. At that party, when they made me a founder, a part of me just cried inside because I knew it was going on the web, but on the web, nobody would really see the wonders that the real building had to offer. The internet is not a replacement for what we have in the real world. Museums are important. Being able to meet people and talk to the people behind the scenes and actually interact with these people in person is important. It's not just about pictures on a computer screen. It's not just about the pictures hanging there on the wall. It's the history behind that picture and knowing that's the original. It's not a scan. It's not a picture of a picture. That is the original artwork, and you can't do that with the Internet. I really felt that the day that museum closed, even though it lasted on the Internet for several years later, that the museum itself actually did die. When I go by that building now and see freaking singular wireless door there and I walk by the back of the building and see where the turtle footprints go up the sidewalk towards the building and see all the cracks and overgrowing it feels like I'm walking around a cemetery the loss of the words of the pictures museum is a big loss upon the turtle fandom if you got to go you were one of the lucky few if you did not get to go, I hope that someday I can open the Turtle Museum that is worthy enough to be able to nod our heads to the Words and Pictures Museum for the great job and the wonderful experiences they gave me. I want to be able to do the same for many other fans to come. The Words and Pictures Museum was started in 1992 by Kevin Eastman and closed in July 1999. The employees there were some of the nicest people you could have ever met. And I want to thank both Fiona and Phil for all the wonderful times and experiences that you gave me at the Words and Pictures Museum. Next week, I get to tell you guys about TurtleCon 1992.